Good morning and welcome to today's episode. This is our second episode of air pollution in Nairobi County and in our country at large. Today, again, we are at the Kenya Meteorological Department. This is a department under our state and the Ministry of Environment. They basically and majorly do a lot of monitoring, especially where our weather patterns are concerned. And today, we are here to look at our ozone layer. Sometimes we wonder what ozone layer is. I'm sure the viewer is wondering what ozone layer is, and we are here to answer that. What is the importance of ozone layer, and especially to our developing country, our developing country like Kenya? And we are here to answer your question, to show you exactly how they are able to measure that in real time. Karibu. As I told you, we are at the Kenya Meteorological Department, and as I promised, Today we are looking at the ozone layer and our specialist and expert has joined us. She will introduce herself to us viewers so that you get to understand where she's coming from and she'll explain what ozone layer means. Karibu sana Sifros. Thank you Rose. My name is Sifros Nyadida. I'm a meteorologist working at the Kenya Meteorological Department. Currently working at the radio source section, the Global Atmosphere Watch. Wow, that's great. This is the Global Atmospheric Atmosphere Watch, where they monitor all the atmospheric uh, conditions, whatever is going on. And that's why we are here to look at ozone layer. She will demystify what ozone layer is. Perhaps you've heard what uh, people talking about ozone layer, ozone layer depletion, ozone layer regeneration, and you don't know what that means. Today, we are here to inform you and give you that knowledge, what it means or what ozone layer means. So, Sifros, what is ozone layer? The ozone layer is a layer within the atmosphere, specifically within the stratosphere, that helps prevent the harmful radiation from the sun from reaching the earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ultraviolet radiation. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, in simple terms, or the way I have understood it, is that direct sun is dangerous for all living things that are on Earth, and therefore ozone layer acts like a buffer or a blanket. You see, it covers and ensures that direct sun does not reach us here on Earth, and therefore protect us from harmful things that can happen to us. For example, cancer, will I be right to say that? Yeah, you are very right. Yeah, the uh, skin cancer. The skin cancer, the uh, eye cataracts. Yes. Yes. And therefore, this leads to our second question. What is the importance of ozone layer? OK, as I've said, the ozone layer, the importance is that it prevents the ultraviolet radiation from reaching the Earth. Yes. So as, as a human beings or as scientists, we are there to monitor the depletion, or rather to monitor that the ozone layer is not depleted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the depletion of this ozone layer is caused by the chemicals we use in, we use in our houses, the aerosols, mm -hmm. the halogens, the chloro, fluorochlorocarbons, mm -hmm. those are the things that deplete the ozone layer. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when you talk about aerosols, do perfume fall under that? Yeah, the perfumes perfumes fall, fall under that. Yeah. Yes. And you, you, you know, sometimes when you look at environment, we think that at individual level, we are not contributing anything negative to the environment. But did you hear that, that our perfumes the kind of perfumes we use in the house, for example, in our toilets, in our bathrooms, in our kitchen sometimes, they all contribute to ozone layer depletion. And uh, this leads us to the next question where we would like to understand how we can regenerate our ozone. Okay, the ozone layer, its regeneration mainly depends on us reducing the use of these chemicals. Okay. Yes. <laughs> And uh, what can you say is the biggest contributor to ozone layer depletion? The biggest contributor are the manufacturing companies okay. and the vehicles that we use. Mm -hmm. The nitrogen oxides that are produced by our vehicles contribute a, a large amount of gases that deplete the ozone layer. Mm -hmm. yes. And therefore cause harm yes. to the covering that is supposed to protect us against the rays of the sun. Yes. And therefore, you mentioned that you monitor, you actually measure in real time, 
yes. and uh, we have that information. Maybe you can explain to us how you do it, the instrument that you use, why you do it weekly, and what that informs you about our ozone layer. Okay, here we majorly measure the ozone layer using various instruments. Okay. There are those that we use to measure the ozone layer on a daily basis, okay. like the Dobson spectrophotometer, mm -hmm. which is used to measure the total column ozone. Mm -hmm. We do that twice per day, between 9 and 10, and between uh, 3 and 4. Why the timing of the day? The timing of the day is when we have the maximum radiation from the sun, okay. yes. And uh, another instrument that we use is the ozone sonde. That's an instrument that contains a chemical, the electrochemical cell, mm -hmm. and is attached to a radio sonde. Okay. That one we use to measure the vertical profile ozone mm -hmm. once per week, every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So that instrument, the the science behind it is, is that the cells contain some chemicals, okay. potassium iodide solution. Mm -hmm. The cathode contains the dilute potassium iodide solution, okay. and the anode part of it contains concentrated potassium iodide solution. Okay. So when the when this chemical, the cell inside this, this the cell inside this chemical mm -hmm. reacts with the air in the atmosphere, okay. and it produces a current. This current will be equivalent to the amount of ozone in that that atmosphere. Thank you, Sifros. I hope you have learned something, especially your role in ensuring that we live in a sustainable world. My name is Rose Gishure. Welcome and stay tuned for our next episode.